Okay, welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we're going to write a program using loops uh, to determine how much money is going to be in a bank account each year for the next 10 years, assuming we're given the initial principal and the annual interest rate. We're just going to be using simple interest to um, simplify our program a little bit. So go ahead and open up Visual Studio. Once you get there, uh, click on New Project. And make sure we select Win32 console application. I'm going to name mine interest. Make sure that you click on the application settings. Make sure you leave it as console application and select empty project and click finish. After the Solution Explorer comes up over here on the left side of your screen, right click on Source File, say Add New Item, select the CPP file, and I again am going to name my uh, interest. This time I'm going to put a .cpp at the end of it, click Add. This should give me a nice blank screen here, which is where I can now start typing my program. The entry point to any C program is going to be your main function, so we'll put that in. If I want to do any kind of input or output in C, I have to include the standard io.h header file. All right, uh, I want to read from the user uh, the initial principal and the annual interest rate. So we need to create two variables representing the initial principal and the annual interest rate. So let's go ahead, uh, let's see, the initial principal, let's say this is going to be a double, we have high hopes that this is going to be a very large number and the annual interest rate this needs to be uh, this could be a double also um, so I'm going to create another one called interest rate okay let's prompt the user please enter the initial princip principle and then read it from the user a double is a long float so percent lf and then put that into the principal variable. And then we will read, please enter the uh, interest rate. Okay, and we'll read that in. Now this is all that we need. We can go ahead and just start calculating what the, uh, uh, the amount of money that they're going to have in the bank each year in the next 10 years will be. So. Let us um, print out a little table. We're going to say here is our, oops, let's start off with the year, followed by the principal, and uh, uh, maybe that's all that we need, a new line character. So that's all that we need there. Um, we're going to have a for loop going from year zero and we want to go up to year 10, so I'm going to go up to 11, strictly less than 11. You could make it less than or equal to 10 if you wanted to. That variable i we need to declare somewhere. I'll declare it up at the top as int i. All of our variables in C programs need to be declared at the top of our program, so I'll make uh, my int i up at the top. So uh, there's my loop. I printed out year and principal, so now I'm just going to print out um, i's value. That's going to be my year followed by what my principal is. Well, that's going to be a long float. I'm going to make it a dot two LF, followed by a new line. And this will be, to start off, will be my value of I, followed by my current principal. Now, how do I calculate what my principal is going to be in subsequent years? Well, it's going to be principal times interest rate plus principal. So my formula is going to be that my new principal is going to be my old principal plus my current principal times my interest rate. Now, we have learned a little shortcut for this. If you want to, you can do uh, principal e uh, plus equals principal times interest rate. That would work. Um, we can't do a plus times equal, so if you're thinking that maybe you can get rid of that variable right there also, you can't do both of them next to each other. So that wouldn't work. You'd actually have to create a separate line of code. But these two lines of code that I have right here uh, do work exactly the same. And then that's going to loop back up and give me my principal uh, the following year. 
So let's go ahead and save that. Give that a go. Build it. Make sure that it compiles. going to succeed. It should say down here build succeeded as soon as it does. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and run my program. So I go to debug and say start without debugging. And okay, here's my window. And let's say that I start off with $100 and my interest rate is 10%. So I'll do a 0.1 for 10%. And it prints out there is what I'm going to have each year. So you see that the first and year zero I saw for the 100 in year one, I didn't have 110, that's right, that's 10% interest. In year two, I have 121, well, I added $11 instead of just $10 that year, and so on. So, uh, this actually works out well. If you can ever get an interest account, uh, interest rate of 10%, you should probably take it. Put a lot of money in that account. That would be a pretty good interest rate. Okay, you notice that I had to put 0.1 in as my interest rate instead of 10%. If you want to allow them to put percentages instead, I need to type in 10 uh, then what you're going to need to do is take your interest rate down here in your formula and just divide it by 100. Uh, and then you can allow them to actually put a whole number like 10% instead of 0.1 for uh, their interest rate. Could I have written this with a while loop instead of a for loop? The answer to that is absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll just comment out the for right there. I could have written this as a while loop instead. The difference is that, first of all, I need to make sure that I have initialized my variable i before I start. And then inside of my loop, make sure that I increment my value of i. So what you see is that using a for loop puts all of those statements on the same line as opposed to putting them on separate lines. I could put them on separate lines. Here's my uh, initialization, here's my while, here's my condition, and there's my increment. You still see all of them. They're just on different lines than uh, they were in the for loop, which made it a little bit more compact. For loops are typically preferred a little bit more than while loops if all you're doing is iterating over a certain set of values. In this case, we want to loop exactly 10 times. Um, or in this case, we're actually looping 11 times. But um, so the for loops are typically preferred if that's the case. If you're looping over some condition, uh, not just like a numeric condition, but whether or not some condition is going to be, uh, become false at some point, then the while loop is uh, going to be preferred over that. So let's try this again. $200 is my initial principal, and uh, let's say that I have a 0 .01, uh, so that would be a 1% interest rate. And there you see that it still prints out, um, works just the same, having a while loop instead of a for loop. Um, I could also do this, let's do one more way of doing this, I'm going to go ahead and comment out a couple more lines here, actually I'm going to leave that one in, and I'm going to make this a do while loop instead, so there's my do and my while is going to be at the bottom while i is less than 11. I still have my plus plus uh, inside of it. And this is going to make sure that I get inside of it at least one time though. Uh, and that should work the same way. Let's go ahead and build that up. And then we will run it. Let's make sure that it still works. Initial principle. Let's go back to our 100 with a 10% interest rate. And you see that all of the numbers still do come out the same. So uh, it still works correctly there. So that's using uh, all three of the different loops. If I were writing this program, I would do it the way that we did it the first time, which is using a for loop, since we're just iterating a finite number of times based on a numeric value. Okay, uh, that's it for this lecture. I'll talk with you all soon.